Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Have you ever wondered why so many medical and child feeding authorities recommend Horlicks? Well, it's because Horlicks is rich in the precious vitamins that children need. Rich in minerals, too, and in valuable carbohydrates and proteins. That's why Horlicks helps develop husky bodies and strong bones and teeth. You can't do anything better for those children of yours than to give them plenty of Horlicks malted milk. Vacuum processed from rich, full cream milk and the finest of wheat and malted barley. Horlicks is rich in the wholesome nourishment that young bodies need. They love it, too. All children like the taste of Horlicks. No family should be without a package on the pantry shelf. And now, here's a special message from Lum and Abner about that flashlight that they offered to send to listeners. They say they just didn't know they had so many friends. The number of requests for flashlights was so great that they can't be made quickly enough to send out promptly. But they want you to know that everyone who sent in will get his flashlight just as soon as is humanly possible. They appreciate your waiting and know that you will be delighted with your flashlight when you do finally get it. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner's swap idea, that of trading groceries out of his store for anything the customer might have to trade, is proving very popular. He has monopolized business in Pine Ridge for the past few days, and incidentally is acquiring a large and assorted collection of animals, as well as other odds and ends. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum alone in the store. Dick Huddleston is just entering. Listen. Well, come in, come in. Right over on this side of the store for lowest prices. Quantity merchandise at quality... Oh, hi there, Dick. I thought you was a customer coming in. <laughs> no, I didn't want to buy nothing, Lum. I was just looking for Abner. Uh, for Abner? Yeah. And I reckon he's out back there tending to that livestock he is. I ain't saw him in a couple of hours now. Sit down. He'll more likely be in directly. Yeah, well, I'll just wait till he gets inside. I can't talk to him out there if he's busy, no way. Now, he's busy, I'll tell you that. Keeps him and Cedric both busy all day tending to that stock of his. <laughs> you order to see just what all he's got back there. I'm doing this conglomeration of animals I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> he just went from hog wild. Swap for anything they bring in here. Yeah, well, that's uh, what I want to talk to him about. Well, huh? He's got goats and hogs and cows and dogs and chickens and turkeys and guineas and possums. <laughs> Swap for three possums in a coon this morning. <laughs> For goodness sake. He's got 60-some-odd rabbits out there. 60? There was, last county made, and yes, this Snake Hogan's panned off a old horse on him. I just wish you could see him. Abner gives Snake uh, Hogan $50 in trade for it, and he laid down out there at the side of the store and taken him and Cedric my now all night to get him in the lot back there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Abner never was much of a trader no way long. I don't see why he started on this swapping business in the first place. I don't neither. I wouldn't give him three dollars for that horse, even if he lives. Yeah. He had the veteran over here twice today. He's so weak he can't even stand up. Well, now, how does he ever expect to come out on a deal like that long? He can't sell a horse. He's that near dead. Well, he's going to try to pan the horse off on somebody. He's got him propped up out there in the stall to where he sort of looks like he's standing up. Yeah. Well, he's just ruined the business here in town, Mom. That's what he's doing. If he's making any money out of it, well, I wouldn't complain. But that's what I came over to talk to him about. He's not making anything, and we can't make nothing. Why, no. I haven't made expenses all week. All my customers are bringing eggs or chickens or something over here and swapping them to him for groceries, and you can't get them to pay cash as long as they can do that. Well, I don't know. He won't last long, no, Dick. Just look over there how his stock's running down. Yeah. They are empty them shelters again. Yeah, yeah. He'll be out of merchandise in a few days, or 80s are going now. He's already run out of feed. <laughs> that bunch of stock he's got out there is eating him out of business. He had to buy feed from me today. He did? Yeah, yeah he's the best customer I've got now. Fact is, he's about the only one I've got. <laughs> Granny's, I'm sure making him pay a profit on that feed I'm telling him, though. Well, where's he getting the money to pay for it, Lum? Well, I'm having to sell it to him on a credit. He ain't got no cash money at all. Yeah, you're taking big chances there. Ain't you selling him on a credit with all that uh, trading that he's doing? Yeah, but I know I couldn't hardly turn Abner down. I've known him so long. No, of course. But now a fellow's got to watch his credit business, Lum. 
I had a chance this morning to sell a batch of stuff on the credit and make some money, but I turned them down because I knew there wasn't a chance for me to ever get my money out of them. All right, sure. It's that uh, circus that's supposed to open up here tomorrow. Circus? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Been seeing some bill posters around town. Oh, yeah, the circus back to town with them. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be right smart of a show. Well, I don't know, Lum. They ain't got much. Just a bunch of old wore-out animals. It's so poor. They look like they're about half star. Well, I do know. I went down to look over what they had this morning. Just about ready to fold up. More likely be stranded right here in Pine Ridge. Well, we get I do know. Why, they didn't have enough groceries there in the cook tent to last them through the day. Yeah. They don't make arrangements for credit around here someplace. Well, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, more than likely be on charity. Why, sure, that's what I'm afraid of. Have to feed them all the rest of the winter. I feel sorry for, for folks like that, but I'm glad they never come over here looking for credit. Now, I'd hate to turn them down, but I know I can't afford to feed a whole circus crew. Why, I know. That's the way I felt about it. And there ain't a chance the world a fella ever getting his money from an outfit like it. Well, I know. Stuck and let them have it. Well, I, wait a minute. There's our ring. Hey, Granny, this is one time I can ask my own prices without having her cutting under me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? This is the John M. Down store. I'm Edwards talking. Uh, no, Mom, that's Abner, uh, Mr. Peabody's side of the store that's doing that. Uh-huh. Well, I just couldn't tell you, Mrs. Willis. You, you have to talk to him about it. I reckon he will, though. He ain't turned nobody down on nothing yet. Well, he ought to be in most any time now. All right, I'll tell him. No, not at all, not at all. Goodbye. <laughs> George Willis is woman and calling. Wants to swap a couple of house cats and some goldfish for some groceries. <laughs> oh, my God, goodness. Sake. I told her to pick him on down. He'll swap for anything. <laughs> he got a whole cage full of white mice back there he swapped for this morning. White he mice? take them, he ought to take goldfish. Well, what in the world does he expect to do with all this stuff? Stuff like white mice? I don't know. I don't think he knows himself. Don't reckon he looked that for a head. Just swap it. <laughs> well, it beats anything that I've ever seen. Ain't no use to talk to him about it, though. I tried it again this morning. He says I was just jealous because he's doing such a big business. Yeah. Well, he can have all that kind of business he wants, Lum. I don't want none of it. I know that. Anyway, here comes Cedric in the back door there, Dick. Find out what you say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, howdy, Cedric. Well, howdy, Mr. Dick. Where about you, Mr. Abner at, Mr. Lum? I don't know, Cedric. I just lied. He's out back there ten days stop. No, he left out there about an hour ago. Went off for some feller. I don't know who he was. <laughs> yeah, he's more than likely out making another trade with somebody. <laughs> he, he better get them dogs or them possums one out of the same pen back there. You mean he's got the dogs and the possum in the same pen, Cedric? Well, no, not in the same pen. He's got the possums in a cage, but the dogs is barking at him and scaring the rest of the livestock out there. <laughs> yeah, just let them bark. It ain't none of my worry. <laughs> well, it ain't none of mine either. That is, it ain't supposed to be. I went to work down here at the store. You fellas said you wanted me to deliver groceries. All I did the last two days is build pens and look after that menagerie out there. <laughs> Keeping you pretty busy, are they, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Them pigeons got out a while ago, and I had a time of getting them all back in. Never did catch two of them. They flowed off. Or flowed off first. <laughs> well, sir, I want to go back there, Drex, and see that zoo. Just see what it looks like back there. Yeah, Abner will be running competition with that circus over there. Well, <laughs> Yeah, you ought to just join up with them. I'm just 50 and 50 50. They'd have a pretty good show with all these guys. They need somebody else who won't swap some animals, I reckon. Well, better tell them we ain't got no more room out there now, Mr. Lone. Hello? Got them down, store. I'm Edwards talking. Why, no, he ain't here. I, I don't know where he's at, I. He done what? Well, well, now, don't jump on me about it. Me and him ain't partners no more. He's the one that's doing the swapping. Well, I couldn't tell you there's a couple back there, but I don't know who he got them off of. Uh, well, wait a minute. Hold the receiver. Uh, who did Abner get them two hounds from, Cedric? Oh, uh, you see, I believe he swapped Miss Reynolds out of them this morning. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I reckon they're yours, Ike. Cedric says Abner got them from your woman this morning. Well, I don't know. You have to see him about it. Well, that's up to you and him. I, I don't know what the law is on it. All right. All right, I Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, Granny Zepner's got himself into it now, sure enough. What's the matter, Lon? Well, that was Ike Reynolds. Mad enough to bite. Said while he's down to sawmill at work today, his woman 
brung his two best hounds down here and swapped them to Abner for groceries. <laughs> now he's wanting them back, said they weren't hurting to trade. Well, if I was him, I'd call that a good cutting. Yeah, he said it was the best two varmint dogs he had on the place. Said they'd both extras. Yeah, well, that Ike's pretty mad uh, when he gets mad that way. He's a hard customer. Oh, yeah, he's mad now, too. Says he's going to give Abner a licking or get them hounds back one. <laughs> Yonder comes Mr. Abner out front there now. Yeah, yeah, there he is. I expect I better get on back out there and see if them pigeons just came back yet. They're supposed to be homers, but I don't know where they think they live at now. <laughs> over here or back over there at Doolittle's place where they come from. Uh, howdy, Abner. Uh, you got yourself into it now, Abner. Ike Reynolds just called up and said his woman swapped you a couple of his hounds unbeknownst to him. Says he's going to get them back or give you a licking. Yeah, I'd just like to see him try. I ain't the constable here for nothing. Yeah, I've been waiting to see you too, Abner. Yeah, oh, well, I've been over making a big deal. <laughs> I dog it, I sold $200 worth of gopher just now. <laughs> Beat you fellas to it. <laughs> $200 worth? Yes, sir, 200 At circus that's in town. I made arrangements to furnish them all their stuff while they're here. Oh, yeah. Did you sell that outfit some groceries on a credit avenue? Good goodness, sir. Well, yes, but he's going to pay me for to leave town on. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. You'll never get a nickel of it, Abner. No. Dick was just down telling me they're just about ready to fold up. Yeah, but now, they never put nothing over on me. I got them where they'll have to pay me. I've got a first mortgage on every animal they got down there. Bears and lions and monkeys and beavers and camels and everything. <laughs> Abner may not be making any money, but he's certainly doing the business. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the following scene, we find it's 7 a.m. in the Peterson home. The alarm's ringing now. Let's see what happens. Hey, hey, turn that off, Lars. Who, me? What's wrong with you turning it off? Oh, all right, all right, if you can't even do that. <laughs> and don't grouch about it. Grouch? Say, if you'd slept as little as I did last night, you'd be grouchy, too. Well, it is time to get up, you know. What's the matter with you lately, anyway? I mm, wish I knew. I haven't had a good night's rest for days. Well, you certainly sound like it, too. Listen, Ed, why don't you try that milk drink Mrs. Arnold told us about? What's that? Horlick's malted milk. She gives it to Fred when he can't get to sleep. Says it makes him sleep like a top, and Fred's such a dear, too. He's always good-tempered. Oh, sure. You <laughs> is, anyway. You know, but about that Horlick's... How does it make you sleep? Well, everyone sleeps better after a light meal, you know. And that's where Horlicks comes in. Yeah, how? Well, here's the secret. Horlicks malted milk is easy to digest. That's why they give it to sick people. Yeah? Mrs. Arnold says that a glass of it, hot, just before going to bed, relaxes you. Mm -hmm. And that's just your trouble. You're not relaxed enough. You, you worry too much. Oh, well, that sounds like a good idea to me. I'll tell you what. Bring in a package when you go shopping today, and we'll both try it. Tonight. I've got to get some sleep, and pretty soon, too. Well, it certainly looks as if the sleep problem has been solved in the Peterson home now. There's nothing like a glass full of Horlick's malted milk to help promote sound, restful sleep. Hot, just before going to bed. If you have trouble in getting to sleep or in sleeping soundly, try the Horlick plan yourself. You can get Horlick's malted milk at your favorite druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. But remember... It must be Horlicks. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>